Hello and welcome to this small introduction to Adobe Illustrator. I'm here because I use Illustrator almost every day across both my work and personal life, so I'm really well equipped to give you a basic overview of some key ideas. I'll also encourage you to download the software yourself to see all the amazing things you can do to facilitate your own research and teaching interests. For anyone who's not familiar, Illustrator is available through the Adobe Creative Cloud, which at Aston we now all have access to thanks to our Creative Campus partnership. The overall purpose of Illustrator is to allow people to create vector-based illustrations, and so it's quite popular amongst graphic designers, but don't let that put you off. What's important for us is that it has so much potential to be used for all kinds of purposes by people of any skill level. For example, I'm based in Health and Life Sciences, and I use Illustrator to create diagrams and illustrations for my teaching, but I also use it to help improve the clarity of my data presentation for my research. In this way, if you ever use any software to build shapes or present data, for example, for presentations or academic posters, then I'm confident that you'll also appreciate and enjoy the added features available in Illustrator. The only disclaimer I'll add here is that mastery of Illustrator does take a little time, but luckily you don't need to master it to be able to utilize its core functions in a way that facilitates your work. Today, I'm going to go through just a few of the fundamental ways to start to use Illustrator, but if you're interested in using it for more advanced purposes, then you can always reach out to me for a quick chat if that would be helpful. Firstly, we need to know how to access Adobe Illustrator, which is available to download through Adobe Creative Cloud. For information of how to download the Creative Cloud desktop app, please see the associated Aston web pages. The desktop app allows you to install a whole bank of Adobe software, but for today, we're going to solely focus on Illustrator. Now, once you've installed Illustrator, we can open the software and either create a new project or we can load one we've worked on before. For example, you may want to work on the poster template, which is available on the web page here. Illustrator saves its editable files as a .ai extension, which preserves all the layers and elements that you've put into it, but you can also save as a PDF for printing or export as an image file as needed. Okay, before we do anything else, let's start with a brand new file by clicking on New File to launch the widget. Here you can choose from preset sizes or you can edit the custom options on the right. For example, if I was making an A0 size academic poster, I'd need to make sure I was working on an area that was 1,189 by 841 millimeters. Remember that you don't have to work in millimeters. Default units can be changed at any time in Edit, Preferences, and Units. Now, the final bit of advice from me before we create a poster is to make sure that you set up some preferences nice and early to ensure that everything is really easy. Start by navigating to the View panel and making sure Smart Guides are ticked. If not, select them immediately. These will help you to see when objects and shapes are aligned with one another. You'll also want to customize your toolbars by clicking on Window and then Toolbars, and then selecting the toolbar you want. Slightly counterintuitively, I'm going to recommend that you start with the advanced toolbar like me, because that way you have access to the maximum possibilities and you can just feel free to ignore any of the icons that you don't need. You'll also notice that many of the tools have these cute little gray arrows in the corner. This shows that the icon houses lots of other tools within it. To access these secret or hidden tools, you can right click the icon and then select the tool you want. For example, if I want to draw a circle rather than a rectangle, I can right-click the rectangle and then click on the ellipse tool instead, which will change the icon. Remember that tools are only being used when they're selected as indicated by the darker color. For this demo today, I'm going to quickly produce a little poster using a nice bright purple background. And to start with, you'll see these elements are being placed onto a big white space called the artboard. This is the printable or visible area of Illustrator in that if you save anything outside of the artboard, you can make sure it won't be visible when you export the file. This is the same as if you have any items outside of the slide in PowerPoint, for example, where it won't present on the screen. To edit an existing artboard or create a new artboard, you can use the artboard tool from the toolbar, which looks like a little piece of paper with a folded corner. If you're watching the recording closely, you'll see that I'm not redrawing my shapes or text items new every time. Instead, I select the object in question and then hold the Alt key on the keyboard whilst moving it to the side to create a carbon copy of the original object. I absolutely love this shortcut because it helps preserve formatting and it speeds things up immensely. I should say as well that there are loads of really useful tools and shortcuts that you can learn to help make Illustrator as easy as possible. But unfortunately, I don't have time to go into everything that Illustrator is capable of in this video. So instead, I've outlined some of my top tips within the poster template, which you can download on this web page. You may also have noticed that I'm relying heavily on the smart guides, where pink lines pop up on the screen to tell me when objects are aligned by edge or center, which, when used well, is something that will really help ensure your poster looks as professional as possible when it goes to print. Okay, 
Now that I have my base poster template, I'm going to start to build some example stimulus paradigms or schematics, which is another thing that Illustrator is really good for, even if you're not a natural graphic designer. On the screen recording here, you'll see that I'm very quickly building some shapes by using the rectangle tool and then editing the fill and the outline, which Illustrator calls the stroke. When put together, this serves as quite a nice illustration of a computer monitor with a fixation cross in the middle, which will serve as the basis of my schematic. I can then use my Alt key shortcut to create a carbon copy of the monitor, but by holding the Shift key at the same time, I can ensure the copy travels along a 45 degree angle to allow me to show the next step in the time series. Another brilliant shortcut is holding the Control or Command key and pressing D. This serves to replicate the previous transformation action. So if you make a copy five centimeters to the right, for example, then Control or Command D will make another copy five centimeters to the right of that copy and so on. It can honestly save you a lot of time and the added bonus is that you can be 100% confident that the spacing is the same between each item. Next, we're going to populate the monitors with our stimuli, which can be letters here just to keep things simple. And then we're going to copy and paste these elements into our poster rather than importing as an image because this preserves the scalable qualities of the elements. You can see, for example, I could make it as big as the A0 piece of paper and it would stay crystal clear, although I probably should aim for something slightly more discreet in the final edit. The next thing we might want to do is add some results, but producing clear, consistent data plots can be a difficult and time-consuming process. The good news is that Illustrator was made for this. If we export our data plots as scalable vector graphics, or SVG files, then this saves each item as an interpretable element. So when we open that file within Illustrator, it maintains those properties. You can see on the screen here that I'm able to edit stroke width and color of my function and data points, but I can also use the type menu to ensure all fonts are the same and to play around with a replacement font of all of them if I'm worried about the clarity of the default option. Then, as before, I'm going to copy and paste the elements into my poster to preserve their scalability and then just make a few final tweaks to ensure I'm happy. Now, I know that there are unbelievable amounts of things I haven't even begun to talk about here, but I hope this serves as a nice introduction to encourage you to download Adobe Illustrator and have a go. Remember that the first time you use it will feel very new, but with even just a small amount of practice, I'm confident that you'll be able to create quality plots, figures, and posters with ease. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll look forward to seeing all the beautiful work you create in Illustrator in the future.